Welcome to Coastal Cooking with your host, Carmela Campbell. Coastal Cooking features delicious recipes and cooking tips from the Gulf Coast's finest chefs and restaurants. Watch as popular local chefs prepare their special dishes with natural gas. Coastal Cooking is brought to you by Pensacola Energy, provider of clean, efficient, natural gas. My guest today is Dot Chef, the owner and executive chef at Cons on Palafox. Hey folks. Welcome again. We Thanks a lot. love having you back. And you've got three of some of your favorite dishes. Yes, ma'am. That are also on the menu at the restaurant. Absolutely. Tell us what they are. Um, the three dishes that we're going to do today, one is a kal chuk, which basically kal means caramelization, and chuk means pork in Cambodian. It is a Chinese classic, but growing up in Pennsylvania, you know, it was cheap to buy pork belly and to feed four boys, you know, and mm -hmm. um, it, it just stuck to me. and. It's a great seller at the restaurant. Uh, people love it, people dig it. It's just totally different from any other pork belly that's out there, you know, mm -hmm. but it, it's a great dish. Uh, the second dish, we're gonna do a Khmer beef salad. It is a takeoff of one of the salads my mom used to make. Uh, when she did have beef in the house, it was kind of a exotic protein because we always had chicken and pork. And when, when mom got a piece of beef, they were like, oh, mom got beef, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't like a ribeye, it wasn't like a filet or like your higher end cuts. It's just my, my parents didn't know that, you know. Mm -hmm. So it was always like maybe a piece of top round, you know. But she mm -hmm. would do this salad that was just awesome because we had beef, you know, for dinner that night, you know. So basically it's a nice seared piece of beef, uh, watercress salad and tomatoes. But like I said, you know, I took my mom's version of it and then just, just add a little twist to it. Mm. And the third dish... Um, I added to Khan's was we do a ramen pad thai stir fry. Um, I love a good pad thai, but instead of doing the pad thai noodles, we sell a lot of ramen, so I just took the ramen oh. because we do a dish that's also, that was, you know, a staple in our home, mm -hmm. you know, like during the summertime, instead of having a soupy ramen, you know, we would do a stir fry ramen because, you know, you didn't need that broth during the summertime. Right. But that's, that's been a huge seller and people are, you know, people are starting to catch on to it. You know, one of the law firms, every Thursday and Friday, they'll call in and it's like, yeah, we'll take six of them. I'm like, dude, really? You're gonna have six ramen <laughs> stir fries right now and I wanna have two woks? But uh, anyway, yeah, those are the three dishes. We're gonna do a braised pork belly, we're gonna do the Khmer beef salad, uh -huh. and we're gonna do the ground pork ramen stir fry, which, you know, I, I think all three of those dishes are awesome. You know, okay. those are predominant. So right we'll now- we started with our pork belly. Yes. So basically, um, I got a pot here. We are uh, just gonna turn it on to about high. And all really what you wanna do is kind of, we're gonna oil the pork belly a little bit. We're gonna season it with salt and pepper, okay? So is pork belly prominent in Cambodian Yeah, cooking? pork, we eat a lot of pork in Cambodia. Mm -hmm. And like I said, you know, for this cut back in the day, it was super cheap, you know, mm -hmm. it was like $2 a pound, you know, and you, you could go far with it. Now, it's like a luxury protein. You know, it's like everyone's catching on. Everyone's like, oh, I'm doing braised mm -hmm. pork belly. So, mm -hmm. you know, $2 a pound went to like seven bucks a pound, you know, yeah. but, um, but it's good. a great guess. It's you know, good. I think it's one of those pieces that, that was undermined and a lot of people didn't mm -hmm. care about because it, it wasn't a really prime cut of meat. All right, so what we're gonna do is just season it. We're just gonna add the skin side down first, all right? And all you wanna do is we're just gonna sear it all on all sides. Okay. All right. So once that's browning. On all sides. Yep. Okay. Basically you just wanna sear it, give it that nice color. Uh -huh. Well, I love all of your ramen bowl dishes. Thanks, you they know. They are wonderful. And you make that ramen? No, we, I, I don't have the facility or, or the space to do okay. it. But it's a I high know. quality ramen. It's yeah, not, actually, it's I, not I, from the package. No, 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 no. I actually buy a fresh ramen product from one of my Asian vendors. And basically it's from Sun uh, Ramen Company, which is based uh -huh. out of New Jersey. They are basically considered the best uh, ramen company in the United States. And, you know, you just dig around and find what, what works, what's going to be the mm -hmm. best product and stuff like that. But like I said, I don't have time to sit there and... No. Well, it's so different than, you know, the ramen noodles we get packaged. Yeah. That's Nothing more like, like dry. This, this is fresh. You actually have to cook it you first. You can tell. Like too. pasta. Right. You can tell it's a, it's a different type of ramen. 
Looking good, Doc. Yep. All right, that's sealing on all sides. All right, now what we want to do is we're going to add the braising liquid, okay? Mm -hmm. I roughly have about, add about a cup of soy sauce. Okay. We're going to add about like two cups of water. All right. And here are the ingredients that makes it different. We're gonna add palm sugar. All right, this is this is um, palm sugar. Yes, basically it comes from the palm tree. Uh, it's got a different flavor. It almost it almost tastes like honey and a slightly burnt regular like really white sugar. All right, we're gonna add one of them. We're gonna add a cinnamon stick. All right, let's go ahead and add a nub of ginger. All right, I got some garlic cloves. And I got some star anise. We'll just slap that in there. We'll just throw that all in there, okay? What a unique combination. Of yeah, so it basically, it, it, it's got like that nice star anise and cinnamon flavor to it. I can, sp I can smell the anise. And all we want to do is just let that cook. And we're going to put a lid on top of it. There you go. And base that's pretty simple. You're going to let that cook for about um, three to four hours, uh, depending on the thickness of your pork belly. Okay. Cool. Okay. With... The magic of television. That's right. This is a piece of braised pork belly that I just showed you guys. Uh -huh. That's been braised for about four hours. Okay. That's what it looks this like. is how we do it at the restaurant. So all you want to do, you get a pan, heat up some oil. Do you use any particular type of oil? No, I just use that? vegetable okay. oil, shortening. All right, we get that rolling. We could add that. And basically, all you want to do is just brown the edges to that, start to get all warmed up. This is the braising liquid that is the final product of what this oh. is, what I showed you. So okay. basically, it's reducing, it's collecting mm. all that fat, it's getting all, you know, your, your aromatics Lighter. from the flavors of like your, all your herbs and, mm -hmm. you know, your dry product. That's like liquid gold right there, isn't yeah. it? But, but base, yeah, I have people that like, they'll sit there, hey, can we get a side of rice so we can just dump that <laughs> sauce? How many dishes do this do you go through in a week? Uh, I roughly go through like 30 pounds of pork belly. Wow, that's amazing. That's a you know I mean? wonderful it, it, testament to how good it must be. Yeah, you know, it, it doesn't sound like it's a lot, but, you know, for just an appetizer dish. Yes. All right. We're going to take the finished pork belly sauce that we cooked. All right, we're going to go like that. And here is the, here's what made it also unique growing up. is My mom would add regular eggs to the dish uh -huh. and uh, bamboo shoots. But, you know, for the size of the dish, I was like, well... Regular chicken eggs would be too big for the dish, so we're going to use quail eggs. Perfect. So basically, we'll stick about three or four quail eggs in there. And they're just going to warm up? Yep. And okay. also, we got fresh bamboo shoots. Uh, are the quail eggs hard-boiled? Yes. Okay. Mmm. All right. So that's that. And all we really want to do is just let that cook. Just get warm through? Yep. Oh, that looks good. Look how unique the little foil eggs are. Yeah, people freak out about them, but once they eat them, they're like, wow, that's pretty yummy. <laughs> it is yummy. So is this a main dish or an appetizer? This is actually just an appetizer. Appetizer, wow. Yeah, it's, it's like people are like, wow, you give that big hunk of pork belly. It's like, yeah, you know, it's it's... It's a mm -hmm. fairly cheap protein. Why not? Let's make the customers happy. Absolutely. Yeah, at the restaurant, I usually cook this for about like eight minutes, but we just want to mm -hmm. warm this bad boy up since it's already pretty ready to go. Um, and we'll just plate it up, okay? All right, so once that's done, we got our plate here. We're gonna go like that. We're gonna add our quail eggs. And our bamboo shoots. Yep. 
Unique dish, Doc. All of your dishes are unique, though. Well, it's, it's nothing really. It, it's peasant food, you know, that, that we, we grew up But we eating. don't know that. Yeah. <laughs> so this is quite gourmet, you know? I think it's just all relative, you know, where you came from, what you mm. know. Oh, the aroma is wonderful. Yes, does that, that smell awesome? That broth, yes. And mm. we're just going to garnish it with just a little green onions, man. And that's about it. That's it. We'll call this a dish. That's a dish right there. It is finished and beautiful. Yep. Look at that. Simple, easy, Pork straight to the point. Belly appetizer. I yep. love it. Awesome. When we get back, we're going to start. Uh, we're going to do the Khmer beef salad. Um, okay. Like I said, that's another dish that I, I really love. And, you know, it comes with watercress and tomatoes. Mm -hmm. you, I mean, it's a great combination, you know. But, uh, yeah. And you grew up on it. Yep. All right. Well, we'll start that dish right after this. Stay with us. Natural gas is the clean, reliable, earth-friendly energy choice. Here's what Pensacola Energy customers have to say about using natural gas. Natural gas has been great. Um, the difference between cooking on electric and natural gas has been amazing. I really didn't think I would notice that much of a difference, but I really have. Go blue and save green with natural gas from Pensacola Energy. Visit PensacolaEnergy.com and make the switch today. Heating water with electricity versus natural gas can cost twice as much. And tankless natural gas water heaters can add even more savings. So don't get soaked with higher energy costs. Learn more at PensacolaEnergy.com. Our next dish from Khan's on Palafox is Khmer beef salad. Beef salad with this beautiful steak. Yeah, uh, like I said earlier, uh, beef was a high-end commodity protein for like us chat family boys, you know, because we always had chicken and pork. Mm -hmm. But uh, my mom used to do this beef salad. And basically, it wasn't, you know, it was just a, a top round that she cut up. You know, she just did it her own way, and uh, it was killer. So mm -hmm. I just took that rendition of it because it reminded me of that dish, mm -hmm. and uh, we started it at Khan's as a special one day. And you're like, well, you should just put that on the menu. And it's there like one go. of our salads during, you know, it's it's just a great salad. All right. Mm -hmm. So started off, you know. Not to disappoint my mom or anything like that, but mom, yes, I did buy a, a better cut of <laughs> beef. This is a New York strip that we get. Um, we're just gonna salt it, all right? If you can, that's always good, isn't it? Yeah, and you always gotta season your, your, you know, mm. your, your proteins, I think. All right, let's just get the other side. Um, you could grill this, you know, I mean, it's awesome grilled when you're outside and stuff like that, mm -hmm. but since we are indoors, we're just going to pan sear it. All right, so you got that salt and pepper ready to rock and roll. I got a pan here that's just hot, about to smoke. It's smoking. Mm -hmm. Just put a little oil in there. And what we're going to do, we're just going to cook this guy to like rare to mid rare. All right. And while that is going on, let's go ahead. I already went ahead and made the vinaigrette for it. Um, our yeah. vinaigrettes in Cambodia or basically just like some form of like vinegar or an acid. Um, so all this is, is um, lime juice, fresh lime juice, uh, distilled vinegar, salt, pepper, and I just put a little bit of oil into it just because, you know, people here in the States are still used to having like right. a vinaigrette with oil in it, all right? Mm -hmm. And so like I said, uh, I put it in the recipe, it's pretty simple, it's pretty easy. It'll keep, it'll keep well in your refrigerator. I got a nice ripe tomato. All right. What type of greens do we have here? Uh, that is watercress. It's watercress. actually one of my favorite greens. My dad, dude, would go and find watercress during like the falls and winters in Pennsylvania, in the creeks and the streams. Uh -huh. We always knew dad was. He'd come back. He'd have his pants all rolled up, you know, because he didn't wear shorts. His legs are bright red, and he just had this big barrel of watercress that he just found somewhere. Wow. And like, he was just waiting in the water and just pick it. So we grew up eating it, and it's, okay. it's such an awesome green. It's a, di it's a distinctive it green. Is. It um, is. It's very good. It's, it's got a nice peppery bite to it. Mm -hmm. it just, it's just an awesome, awesome green, you know? So what we're gonna do, we just flip that. Uh, I basically have like a uh, marinade that we're gonna just top off the steak with to cook it for a little bit. We tried at the restaurant to marinate it like a day ahead, but basically it just didn't work out too well. So basically mm -hmm. just searing the product, basically with the marinade, it just came out to be 
just perfect. perfect. All right. So watercress, you can get, you basically can get anywhere. You know, I get this mm -hmm. all at the Asian market. Okay, and I do apologize. I forgot the red onions. Usually, you add a little red onion to the pro, to your salad. Uh huh. Too as well. Looks, I don't even know that you need it. It would enhance it. But yes. I think this is going to be good without it. You know, then all you want to do is have that ready to rock and roll. Okay. Just pile it up, huh? Yep. And I'll take some of the vinaigrette and I'll drizzle it onto mm, on the, tomato. the tomato. All right, that's ready okay. to rock. Uh, let's check on our steak. All right, let's go ahead and baste both sides. Don, you grew up cooking, right? Yeah. You know, it was just something we had to do because, like I said, you know, come here to the States, both mom and dad working like two or three jobs, you know, they're, they're, they're leaving the house about five in the morning and they're not getting back to like maybe 10 at so night. So you learned to cook out of necessity. Yeah, you right. know, and try to help out, you know, mom and dad and also mm -hmm. feed my brothers and myself and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, I did, I came to love it, you know, through high school I worked in a restaurant, mm -hmm. through college I worked in a restaurant, and then, um, I realized, like, you know what? I could do this for a living because I graduated with a Bachelor's of History of Political Science. I was like, what am I going to do with this piece of paper? <laughs> well, I'm glad you chose this profession because you are wonderful at it, and we are so happy to have you here in Pensacola. Thank you. To share your Cambodian heritage. You know, yep. Pons is named after your father. Yep. I'm, yeah, the restaurant is named after uh, my dad out of respect for him and you know, helping us escape Cambodia and what he's done for us mm -hmm. boys and, you know, and, and other Cambodians who did, you know, flee and, and come to the United States, you know, he would, he would help them, like, translate paperwork, try to help them with, you know, getting a home, getting a job and stuff like that. So, you know, you got to give respect to your That's dad wonderful. and your mom, yeah. too, as well. But you told me earlier that you would try to recreate dishes that you had just by remembering the flavors. Yes. Now that is an art. <laughs> well, mom and dad were never really there. It's just, you know, on the weekends when, you know, mom did cook, you know, you, you, you smell, you know, yeah. no matter later yeah. on in life you're hungover or not, you're like, ooh, well, that does really smell good. Mm -hmm. But, um, and you remember the process on sitting down and eating, you know, it, it was like, it was more family style, you know, it's putting yeah. components together, you yes. know. Um, mm -hmm. Say if you had a new, if you had a noodle dish, you know, you you'd have to actually make it yourself. You know, noodles be done, proteins be there, your herbs, mm -hmm. your garnishes, whatever. You know, you get as much noodles that you want. You know, always make sure take what you need and not you know and finish your bowl. That's how mom and dad always said it. And basically, you you, you know, you just put things together, mm -hmm. and you just start to remember things like that too as well. You know, in this dish, well, it's you know, worked. She, yeah, she always had it's this dish, and you. I loved it. You know, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. All right, um, we got the steak. I know that some people do care for the fat um, for this presentation. You know, feedback from, from the clientele, we're just gonna take that off, you know? Okay. So it's just easier, so it just, people are just getting a nice cut of meat, mm -hmm. all right? There you go. On the diagonal? Yep. We're gonna cut the beef on the bias. Oh. Oh, God, that is great. The marinade is fabulous. Mm -hmm. mm. And the marinade is pretty simple to make. It's like oyster sauce, it's fish sauce, it's a little bit of sugar, a little bit we'll of black pepper. We'll have the recipes for everyone. Yes. And you're doing this on the diagonal? Yep. And this is cooked to medium rare? I do, rare? yeah. You know, you, you really don't want to overkill a cut mm -hmm. of meat. Oh, this is... like an entree. Yeah, I mean, people are like, wow, you give me Well, a your appetizer thing. looks yeah. like an entree, too. And you all you to really want to do is just kind of present it a little nicely. We're going to slap that guy right there. Oh, We're going to fan it out that. a little Beautiful. bit so you can actually see the product. Nothing shabby about this dish. Beautiful. Yep. And there we have it. That's All a Khmer right. beef salad. Khmer beef salad. And we've got one more great dish from Khan's. Yep. We're going to do the uh, ground pork uh, stir-fried ramen. Oh, sounds great. We'll be right back with that dish after this. 
Heat pumps don't pump much heat. In fact, heat from an efficient natural gas heater can be 30% warmer, and you can get up to an $800 rebate when you install one. Warming up to natural gas yet? Learn more at PensacolaEnergy.com. Natural gas is the clean, reliable, earth-friendly energy choice. Here's what Pensacola Energy customers have to say about using natural gas. The tankless hot water heater is the biggest value that we've seen. Never running out of hot water is great. We had family in town over the holiday, and not one time did we ever run out of hot water. Go blue and save green with natural gas from Pensacola Energy. Visit PensacolaEnergy.com and make the switch today. Natural gas dryers may cost a little more than electric ones, but they dry clothes quicker, making them cost half as much to run. So now who's getting taken to the cleaners? Learn more at PensacolaEnergy.com. It is time to walk. Ah, well, this should be the what funny. What a walk. Uh, yeah, actually, uh, I love walks. You know, I think uh, it's, it's an awesome piece of equipment, you know, no disrespect towards the Japanese and their mm -hmm. hibachi. You know, I think this is just a little bit better than it's hibachi like, style. You nothing know, it's nothing like, like a walk. A walk. Um, mm -hmm. I actually got a unit out there that's got like 18 eyes and it's just pumping like just. Of course you're cooking with natural gas, so that's the only way you could do that, right? Yes. <laughs> All right, guys, basically I ramen pad thai. I took, you know, the, the Thai classic, you know, dish. Um, we, we have a certain version of it too as well, but mm -hmm. you know, since we, we are already buying a really nice product of ramen, you know, from Sun Company out of New mm -hmm. Jersey, I was like, man, let's try it, let's try it with this. And plus we have a dish that's basically a stir fry ramen too as well. So we just kind of incorporated the two together mm -hmm. to have like our own originality of a stir fry ramen dish, okay? So what I got here is uh, fresh ramen. I got a pot of water boiling. All you want to do is just go ahead and drop it in there. And basically you want that to cook for about three minutes, okay? And while that's going, you, we could go ahead and start with our wok, all right? Now this is the type of wok that you use at the restaurant. Yeah. I wish I had a bigger kitchen so we could have like maybe like, you know, two or three, because there's mm. times you get like 20 stir fry wok, stir fries in, they're all different, and you're just oh, like, wow. okay, where do I start, you know? But you know, you make But do. once you start, it doesn't take long. Correct. That's good. All right. So your protein always goes in first? Yep, you wanna get your proteins in. You get that chicken, you get that beef, but like I said, we grew up having ground pork, and it's just like that extra fat mm -hmm. into it just kinda makes it Flavor. awesome. Yep. You basically just get that going. All right. Let's go ahead a little bit of a minced garlic. Uh huh. Gotta have garlic. Mmm. And you've got a nice assortment of vegetables here too, Doc. Yeah, I think. Uh, Cabbage, carrots, bean sprouts, green onions, just like, you know, those are the mm -hmm. staple of like most of our veggies back over there in Cambodia. I mean, you know, relatively cheap, relatively easy to grow mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Well, you know, what's wonderful about doing a stir fry is you can put just about anything. Yeah, you can yeah. use whatever you want. Yeah. You know, Let's just go, go through your veggie drawer right. and be like, okay, I got this, I got this. Let's just throw mm -hmm. it all in there, all right? That's cooking. Let's go ahead and check on your noodles. You kind of want them to be a little al dente because they are going to go to a second process of cooking in this okay. guy right here. All right. That's good. Like I said, you know, um, we have a wok system and basically that thing pumps out like, I don't, I don't know how many BTUs, but it's just blasting, mm -hmm. you know. At, at the restaurant, you can get a dish done in 90 seconds, you know. Now that's fast food there. Yeah. 90 seconds. All right, that's about done. What we're gonna do, we're gonna add some julienne cabbage. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead, a little bit of carrots. Now this helps too, God, is when you've got small pieces of your vegetables that are julienne. Yeah. It helps them cook very quickly. Yes. You know, if you have bigger cuts of this or cuts of that, uh -huh. you know, sometimes it helps to like blanch it like ahead right. of time, like broccoli or something like that, but. 
that's all. I mean, relatively, you can eat all that raw and it still mm -hmm. be delicious. While you finish this, I'm going to give everyone our telephone number. If you would like copies of today's recipes, you can call Pensacola Energy at 436-5050, or you can visit our website, www.coastalcooking.com. So, Dot, you're ready to add the rest of the vegetables. Yep, we're going to add a little bit of bean sprouts. Oh. Okay, love bean sprouts. Let's go ahead and add some uh, green onion sticks. All right. Give that a good toss. All right, the noodles are done. All we're going to do is just strain the water out of it. Okay, we've got our bowl here. We're going to add your ramen. There you go. Some sauce here? Yep. Uh, basically, this is a concoction of fish sauce and soy sauce mixed together. Mm. And this is our pad thai sauce that we make in the restaurant. Um, sugar, palm sugar, um, tamarind. That's about it. All right, right there's your finished product. Um, you had your ground pork, all your veggies, a little garlic, your ramen noodles, and your sauces, and basically that's done. All right, that you turn that bad guy wonderful. off. Yeah, and this is one serving. Gosh. I did add a little extra love to it. Just for me. Since we're on TV. We need to tell everybody where you're located before we before the show is we over. We're right downtown Pensacola. Mm -hmm. uh, we're across from uh, V Paul's and Global Grill. We're next to the Hot Dog Deli too, as well. Mm -hmm. For our lunch and dinner. Yes, ma'am. How many days a week? Uh, lunch Tuesday to Friday, dinner Tuesday to Saturday. Okay. And we're going to top this off with just a little bit of toasted garlic. All right. We got some cilantro. We got some peanuts. A little sambal. Yeah, this is a dish. It certainly is. And a lemon wedge. Cool. Oh, there it is. Look at that. Ramen and that is one serving. Yeah. <gasps> you won't go home hungry, right? No, I that is take it beautiful. home. But yeah, it's, it's a simple dish. It's awesome. Um, I, like I said, I sell a lot of it during lunchtime. Mm -hmm. You know, people you can come see in. Why. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's awesome. Well, look at all of our dishes from yep. Cons. You have done an amazing job. I appreciate it. As Thank always, you. it's so much fun to have you on and watch you work your magic. Well, cool. Well, thank you for having me here well, again. You are more than welcome. And like I said, come folks, um, I'm about to change the menu again in about a month or two. And uh, please come and see us. Uh, like I said, we're downtown mm -hmm. Pensacola, right across from uh, V. Paul's and Global Grill. Yes. Cool? Yes, and right in the heart of where everything's happening. Yeah, and we also do sushi. I think that's where a lot of people know me from, is Absolutely. sushi. Absolutely. You were at the Hilton for years. Yep. Well, Dot, you have uh, done a great job for us, and we appreciate it. No worries. Anytime. Thank you for having me. You're I appreciate it. You're more than it. welcome, and we hope you'll join us again next week. Absolutely. we'll be back with more Coastal Cooking. This has been Coastal Cooking with your host, Carmela Campbell. Coastal Cooking is brought to you by Pensacola Energy, provider of clean, efficient, natural gas. Join us each Sunday at 6 p.m. for more Coastal Cooking.